Hi, and welcome. In this video, I will update y'all on cross number 8. They are still not fully colored up yet, so I will only highlight some distinctive phenotypes and save the thorough sorting for a follow-up video. I will also take the time to talk about a new trait that has a small chance of showing up in this brood, and I'm looking forward to it. For those of you that are new to this channel, my name is Ivan. I created this channel to share and document my results breeding guppies. My first goal is to try and restore a line that breeds true for an all-white phenotype. I challenged myself to start with a single white male we named Gandalf, and intentionally bred him to four different females that did not come from a line of white guppies. We are currently near the end of a series of back crosses and are beginning to see a small subset of each brood showing the all-white characteristic that Gandalf has. Crosses 2 and 8 will be the most relevant for this video. As a quick review, the C2 mother to this brood is heterozygous for the gray-based body color, European blau, potentially Storzbach, and magenta. The card in the corner will take you to a video where I discuss these genes in more detail. But the main takeaway is that we should expect eight major phenotypes. These different phenotypes should actually look very similar to the ones we saw for cross 7. The exception here is that our C2 female has some red pigments. So I am expecting that the white colors in this brood will be less transparent than the white colors in cross 7. Our C2 female also has a very large tail and dorsal fin compared to all the other females I've bred to Gandalf so far. I am curious to see how this affects the fins in this brood. Something new about this brood compared to our other crosses thus far is that there is another trait that I think might show up. Take a look at this male. I pulled him out of my mixed guppy tank and he shows this new trait well. It's a trait that makes the top of the head and nose area of the guppy iridescent rather than colored with the normal gray or blonde scales. For a better comparison, here are two guppies side by side. On the left is the first male I showed you with the iridescent forehead. On the right is one of the C5 male breeders. It is pretty clear that the C5 breeders have a light colored forehead but they are not nearly as iridescent as the male on the left. What's strange to me is that Gandalf doesn't really have it either. Take a look. I'm actually not sure what the trait is called, and if you do, please comment what it is below. At first I thought it might be metalhead, but metalhead typically includes the sides of the head and cheeks and is associated with Moscow strains. I'm just calling it an iridescent forehead for now. I know this trait isn't something brand new. It's actually pretty common in some intensely iridescent strains like full whites, Santa Clauses, and some 24 karat gold guppies. I actually have another male that has this trait too. A while back, I transferred him into a tank I have at work, so I apologize if the lighting doesn't match up well with the previous shots. The big question is, where did these traits come from? To help with some of this mystery, I figured now is probably a good time to dive into a bit more detail regarding my 30 gallon mixed guppy tank, and perhaps this will give us some clues. This is a tank that started the whole project with my four original females and Gandalf. After I collected the first broods from the females, I put them back into this tank and I let them drop their subsequent broods of fry here. Females 1 and 3 died soon after their first drops, so the only batches of fry in this tank came from females 2 and 4. I kept Gandalf in the tank for the majority of the time, and only pulled him when I needed him to pair up with females in my main project. As the fry grew in the 30 gallon tank, I would remove any male that would start developing as soon as I could. This ensured that it was always just Gandalf and the remaining females. This meant that there were lots of additional back crosses happening here. The difference between my main breeding project and this community one is that there was no strict selection of the females, and presumably, they became pregnant as soon as they matured. Periodically, I returned any favorable males that developed the full white color, 
but I really only started doing this recently. The males with the iridescent forehead came from this community tank. Most of these males tend to have random patches of black, so I did not return them into the 30 gallon tank. This is why one of these males lives in a 10 gallon tank at work. The first male with the iridescent forehead I showed did actually make it into the 30 gallon tank because I really liked this trait and he only has minimal amounts of black spots. I suspect that the mother or mothers to these males are sisters to my C2 female. Reason being, female number two was the first to drop multiple batches of fry before female number four. Therefore, her offspring matured and then dropped batches of their own fry first. These males were some of the first ones to show up during that period of time. Secondly, none of the males that had the iridescent forehead had the half black trait. Now I know this is a reason that doesn't hold too much weight because my sample size is way too small, but I still wanted to point this out. So given all this, I am anticipating some of the males in cross eight to exhibit this trait. Currently, none of them do. So therefore I will give it some more time for the late bloomers to mature. It's highly possible that none of them do. And maybe I'll work with the male I have on hand in the future, but I'm keeping my fingers crossed. If one shows up, but has a phenotype that is different from the all white, I will continue to work with it anyway. The iridescent forehead trait is cool and I hope to integrate it into the all white guppy project. I think I have enough of a foundation to hopefully not stray too far from my overall goal. Speaking of phenotypes, this brood will likely look very similar to the males in cross seven. Here is a pinkish male that has been a staple for all of our broods so far. Each cross produced some variant of a pink or light red type male. This one is gray based. I can see some males developing with the white characteristic as well. They are still somewhat faint, but hopefully they will turn as vibrant as the C5 male breeders I set aside. As usual, the females have a more subdued color palette. However, this brood does look to have a substantial amount of females that seem to express the all white phenotype. I'm looking forward to the progress of this cross. Because I've already uploaded the final updates to crosses five, six, and seven, a follow-up to this cross will come sooner rather than later. If this is something that you find interesting, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. I have a couple more crosses to go over and cross nine will be the focus of the next video. And surprisingly, both the C4 females dropped fry after I almost gave up on this cross. Here are a few update clips of my other crosses. I am patiently waiting on Fry from our new cross number 10. She is in her own separate tank with Gandalf and there are hopefully enough hiding places for the Fry to swim to. I am establishing a new cross that I am labeling cross 11 between one of the C5 males and a few females from cross six. I know I mentioned I won't be updating y'all on cross seven and there won't be another dedicated video, but take a look at this male. This was a male that was still a juvenile when I uploaded the update video. He is gray based and clearly showing all the characteristics that makes him appear as close to the white that Gandalf has. He is very pretty and I'm planning on holding on to him. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.